Good morning and welcome to Paul T's World on this lovely frosty morning. It was about minus two centigrade last night. It's about the third frost we've had this week. A little bit early for this part of the world, which is usually about the 5th to the 15th of December. And in this video, I'm going to have a little tour around the whole garden and let's see what it looks like in very early winter. Before we go into the front garden, let's just have a look at what's on the patio. We've got the Cordeline Red Star. It's fairly hardy. It'll be absolutely fine over the winter. Although as a little bit of a precaution, I brought this one from the back garden and put it up next to the house because obviously near the house, it's going to be a lot warmer than out in the garden. Here's the little lime hydrangea that I've got in a pot. It does flop quite a bit. I haven't cut it back at all this year yet. And in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these back in the spring and use these as cuttings. In fact, there's a nice size for the winter hardwood cuttings. Either take the cuttings in early winter or late winter, and I'll do it in late winter, probably February. The lavender are looking good. Just by the pathway near the front door, we've got this azalea bed. Azaleas look gorgeous in the frost. And up to last week, this azalea has been flowering quite nicely. Should be flowering in the early spring but it's decided it wants to flower in the winter as well. We've got all the little buds here ready for next spring. Here are the two fuchsia. Now I cut these fuchsia right back early on last spring. Here we are, see where I've cut it right back and all this is brand new growth. Here's the candy tuft that flowers white so beautifully in the spring, one of the earliest to flower. As you can see, I don't cut a lot back in the autumn. I tend to do most of it in the spring. And here's the liatris. Absolutely gorgeous. It's multiplying its stems each year. This is the one the bees love. Here we've got the Osteospermum. This particular variety seems to be quite hardy, so it grows and spreads really well in the garden. The birds have eaten most of the berries off the Cotoneasta. And in the upper terrace here in the front garden, well, it's Saturday morning, so there's a lot of cars passing by. We've got the ground cover that flowers so well in the spring and early summer. That new cistus, the white cistus, that's a couple of years old. And the sedum. I leave the stems right the way through the winter. And then when the little new buds start down here, oh, in fact, here we are, look at this. There we are. See these new buds there? So we'll just leave the leaves over them and we'll cut these back in the spring as those buds are growing nicely. Across the way, we've got a mophead hydrangea. We just leave these mophead hydrangeas right the way through the winter and then do a little pruning in the spring. I've got a video on pruning hydrangeas. Here's a little rhododendron, dwarf rhododendron. 
again it's got its buds here there we are there's the buds ready for next year a little bobo hydrangea paniculata it does really well each year except the buds the blooms have been getting smaller and smaller so i think that needs a really good feed in the spring let's go straight over to the azalea bed that's in the front garden and see how it's doing there's a large azalea at the front here which is always red in the winter so just as pretty in the winter as in the spring and this is the white one here that's like a waterfall coming down here when it's in flower. It's one of the later ones to flower for some reason. There's a mophead hydrangea. It's one of the ones that I brought from another part of the garden and actually split into five. And that's the bigger one. Bud's ready on this deciduous azalea. This is one of the cuttings I did. Growing strongly. All the buds here. And the sun's just come out now warming up the land, taking the frost away. The penstemons, or as the experts say, penstemons. What I've done is I've cut them half back for the winter. So if there's any heavy winds, they will be okay. And then in the spring, I'll just simply cut them right back to a few inches off the ground and they'll be flowering by June. And here's the troublesome white hydrangea, big leaf hydrangea, mop head. This is the one that I cut right back last spring to see what would happen and to see if it would flower. Now, as we can see, it didn't flower at the top here, although it's wanting to here but it did flower at the edges. This is a cistus that I moved in the spring from the back garden, as it was getting rather unruly there and taking up too much space. A viburnum, flowers in the winter. Right the way through the winter, these mop heads look nice. Leave them on because they look nice and also they protect the plant from any frosts. It's 20 years old or so, this mop head, and every year it flowers all summer. I've cut the peonies back, back to here like this. I've left the supports there, here are the supports, and I've scattered bone meal around the plant. So I've got one, two, three, four, five. Five clumps of peony. Some are pink and some are white. So that's all I do with the peonies. Cut them back in the autumn, put some bone meal around them, and that's it done. The contorted hazel looks interesting at all times of the year. Now from the base, as you can see over there, it sometimes reverts to straight stems. So I simply cut off those stems at the base.
And now what I call the roadbed. What have we got? We've got the rhododendrons, one and two. With the magnolia stellata right next to them. It's just got its little furry buds ready. Again for the spring. So it flowers before the leaves come out, which is lovely. And here I've got some cuttings. This is a hydrangea cutting, paniculata. And this is a lace cap. These are both cuttings from two years ago. And another paniculata here. Interspersed with Brunnera. This is a new Brunnera to me. It's got lovely chatreuse leaves in the summer and I've split it. It's nice to just split plants in the autumn or the spring. And what have we got along here? I've split the Lamium. So I want this area covered in Lamium. Geranium, this is Suzanne. Oh, it was actually flowering until a short while ago. There we are. The frost has just nipped the last of the flowers. As we can see here, there's a hosta here. I'm going to have hostas and brunnera, geranium. Oh, and I got this from my sister, a juga. So I haven't had a juga before, and it had a lovely uh, dark, burgundy red leaves. So I want that as a ground cover as well. Oh, and I've got some more Brunnera here. This could be Jack Frost. So these is where, this is where I've split them up. There we are, where I've split them. Another Ajuga. So I took one piece from my sister's garden and split it in two. And let's see how the oak leaf hydrangea is doing. It did well this year. It flowered there. Moving over to the hydrangea bed and the azalea bed. I suppose I've got enough azaleas in here to call it an azalea bed as well. Just look how pretty the red leaves are on these azaleas. Look at this. Gorgeous. Here's another one in the sunshine. And then my row of azaleas. I'm just getting my shadow in this. Let's see if I can move it out of the way. There's another oak leaf hydrangea. That's the Cecus. Cecus dwarf, is it? it? Looked gorgeous this summer, that's one. And then the various varieties of paniculatas that I've got here. Looking good. Let's pass the hydrangeas that are on the other side of the pathway. Those are the cuttings from two years ago. Lace cap hydrangeas, two varieties. The big shocking pink lace cap. And the Wajila. Big Wajila. I want to grow this up nice and high. And now let's have a look around the back garden in the next video. See you soon for that one. Bye.